is a Meet Hans production. It's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all the people, all the mothers out there. My mother's no longer with us, so um, I think that's kind of a catalyst. I don't do so good on Mother's Day. It's a catalyst to talk about this and kind of, I think, fulfill what she said I was supposed to do before she passed. Um, I want to talk about the sun simulator and also the possibility, is Earth uh, the solar system, is, this, or is our solar system a binary star? That's come up quite a bit, so do we have two suns? I think that's something that's come up in conspiracy theory quite a bit, but I like to address the scientific facts behind it. Yo. Salutations. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Uh, if it was not for my mother, would I not only not been birthed, but I wouldn't be talking to you now, because when I recovered from four traumatic brain injuries after I died, went to the hospital, she knew I would be all right, and she stayed with me the entire time. So God bless to all of you. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about something. Uh, the possibility, and this is something that comes up a lot, is Earth and is our sun a binary star? Do we have two suns? And also something called the solar simulator uh, or sun simulator that's come up quite a bit, all right? That is, uh, do we have a, actually a false sun that is illuminating us? And is that some type of a hologram? So let's address that real quick because there are some scientific things that come along with this that need to be addressed first before wild things like <clears throat> Nibiru and things like that that aren't even possible right now, but that's another subject. And real quick, why I have an interest in this in particular and always have is because when I was a kid, I'd experienced this gentleman, Xandar, who you've seen before, more who came from Abel 2256 back there. But when I somewhat, forgive me, interrogated him about where was he from when I was on this ship during this particular experience, he first was telling me, he's communicating things to telethought. It doesn't matter, I won't understand. And then when he starts telling me, he's saying the exo-space-time continuum and so many million light years out and things I don't understand, he was right. But then he said, focus on the third and fourth planets outside of uh, Pluto that are jump off, jumping off points into your solar system for us due to the problems they have with the density, all right? And at that time, as a kid, I'm communicate back to him, hey, are you lying to me? Because there are no planets outside of Pluto. And he said, it doesn't matter because you haven't, found, you haven't found that yet either. And at that time, later on, I discovered, man, maybe, gosh, 18, 20 years later, they discovered what's called trans-Neptunian objects, that there's another Kuiper belt outside of Pluto. And outside of there, you have so many objects that are bigger than Pluto that are planetoids and different sizes that they're giving them right now. Uh, there's two that just have been flashed on the on what you've seen before and after you'll see. That's Eris and Edna that catch my attention. Those might be the fourth and fifth uh, planets he was talking about. But that takes us into something else, all right? All these objects in the Kuiper belt have a very odd orbit in terms of what they call, what the astronomers call, uh, gravitational planetary protuberance. All right, planetary perturbance. That's very interesting, very, very uh, important. Because right now, if there was a Nibiru out there, like those objects are, and it was coming towards Earth or even into our solar system, even past Pluto, there would be all sorts of bells and whistles. Those things aren't coming that close in. They're not gonna. Sorry, no Nibiru coming in to crash into planet Earth. That's crap that I wish would stop being promoted. Anyway, um, concerning these trans-Neptunian objects, in the Kuiper belt, they've got these odd orbits, all right, that is leading uh, the astronomers to think that perhaps what's giving them this orbit out there and what they're attracted by might be a brown dwarf. And if it's a brown dwarf, it's going to be on the infrared light scale, and we're not going to see it. It's going to be hard to detect, all right? So that could be the second sun that everybody's talking about, 
right? Not the fact that some people have seen two suns with, uh, with their cameras and stuff. There's something called at atmospheric, uh, trop tropical spherical uh, illusion. But I'll put a, a picture of that on there too. But that's something that actually creates that double sun illusion, all right? <clears throat> now, switching over and going into what has been called the sun simulator. Do we have a false sun? Now, there's two patents that can be looked up, government patents for this device. And the, the two, this number, um, US 3, 324-7368. And the other patent, you can look up, and you go to Google Patents and type in this number. Anybody can do it. The next patent is US 3239-660. They're actually called the Sun Simulator. And you'll see what they look like. They look like a hexagon with a dark circle in the middle, all right? That's not anything new. Those patents go back to 1960, 66, around in there. And when I look at uh, anybody, get on YouTube and type in um, Star Trek, the original movie, uh, the Enterprise in dry dock. And you'll see when Kirk and Scotty are pulling up to it and going in the shuttle by the, by the uh, Enterprise, you'll see one of these sun simulators right there lighting up the Enterprise, the exact same configuration. So that also takes us into how big of one of these have they made that might be generating extra false light here, and also um, into what uh, Dr. Bernard King had called uh, black dot theory, which we talked about. I'm more interested in black dot theory because it allows me to access the racial memory through the melon. All right, so that's another thing. But nonetheless, when you look at the black dot, the eye of Horus, it looks very similar to this, uh, this solar simulator. And when I start looking at some Egyptian hieroglyphs that are related to the sun, you see the same configuration, configuration on some of the hieroglyphs. So I think it comes to a fact of, is there one of these in our atmosphere that is also, or in our orbit that is also of non-terrestrial origin? I don't think NASA quite has the ability to blow, to blow it up like that. Do I think they're using this technology to illuminate underground tunnels and things like that, underground bases? Yes, like what Phil Schneider talks about, yes. But anyway, that's just kind of where I want to, I guess I'll stop there, from the solar simulator and maybe how there's some parts of that that are realistic. There's something out there people are catching, but I think we do have a real sun that has wave phenomenon, all right? but there's something else that they may have on one of these solar stations or, sorry, uh, space stations or something that is generating a false light people are catching. I've seen too much evidence of that right now. So anyway, that's, uh, what was the catch? Make sure that's, uh, I think that's most of the cool stuff right there. <laughs> uh, one more time, the patents. US 324-7367A, and the second one is US patent, US Three two three nine six six zero. Check those out. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm also going to Patreon to do more close interaction with people. I want to talk to people more away from some of the trolls. So many good people have supported me during this and watch these videos and leave comments. Thank you so much. All right, I do appreciate you. Um, I might not have kept going on with that if it was not for you. So thank you. Check me out here, subscribe here, check me out on Patreon. Happy Mother's Day to all, peace.